Hi, John McElroy here, back at Kerasoft, mm -hmm. back with Terry Wachowski, the president of Kerasoft. And Terry, you got more to show us on the Cybertruck battery pack. Yeah, welcome back, John. Um, last time we were here, we looked at the Cybertruck battery and we you know, had taken it apart. Uh, we've taken it even further at this point. So I thought, hey, there's a couple things while you're here. We're just going to look at uh, some of the, the things we're able to observe. You guys uh, always find our, more details, and always, that's what I love about the, it. The more you dig, the more you find. And what's really interesting is how did they used to do it and how are they doing it now? Right. And is it part of that evolution of uh, better technology, more efficient, lower cost? Or was it just, hey, this would be fun to do, and trying to sort all that So out. we'll get more into the battery, and then I know you got some inverter stuff that you guys have found, some, yeah, yeah. some, some very some interesting things. Some of the power electronics, it's, uh, it's all part of the same story. Yeah. Right? Uh, this is the battery, the battery, the battery farm. The, this is upside down, so we're, you know, we're looking at the, the ground here. We'd taken the cover off last time you, you were here. And uh, if you remember, the batteries were covered with this uh, kind of a mica that, that covers the whole, all the cells. Well, we've been uh, dissecting the battery further. We've got essentially all this removed uh, to where we can start to bring the cells out, which is not easy. Those cells are not supposed to come out of there. They're packed <laughs> in solid. They are packed, and you remember when we looked at the fact that they inject this foam in six points around this each and every one of these. sort of teal colored foam, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, When we get the battery out, one thing we've noticed is that this is the Cybertruck. This is the Model Y battery. Oh, they're different. And the end is different. Well, the old, this is the vent. This is if it gets hot and it has to, to vent out. You know, there's a vent here. And this was crimped in place. This is a different design with the staking uh, to get that. What do you that mean vent staking? In there. Uh, you can see some staking that's happening here. It, it's like? Yeah, banging, hit, hit in. So it's easier to manufacture, mm -hmm. uh, quicker to manufacture. And then the vent is like a, a little BB. So it just kind of blows the BB out and, and, and vents anything that's bad in there. So uh, that's the, the Cybertruck cell. So ba just from cell. Model Y to Cybertruck, they figured out a way to make them faster. Exactly. Make them faster, make them less cost. Um, if you remember, they used to have much smaller cells. Right. So you had to make 6,000 connections, and well, now they make 1,000 connections. It's just easier to build with that battery. It's easier to, to build with this. Um, the way the battery is cooled is interesting. And if you look, you can actually see where the cooling f ribbon contacts that battery. Yeah, you can so see it's the essentially the metal glued. Is, oh, oh yeah. glued on. Yeah. yeah, so you can see where it's been in contact. And if you look uh, in the battery, you can actually see that cooling ribbon. So you see it snaking in between all the cells. Between every two rows, you'll find one of those ribbons. So when the coolant comes in, it goes to a manifold and, and goes and cools, cools all those cells. The, uh, the difficulty with that is you're trying to take all the heat out of that cell, out of that patch of contact. That's all. So that's where you're trying to suck the heat out of this battery. The problem with the battery is that the way it's made, uh, the anode and cathode are like long ribbons and they're rolled up. It mm. almost looks like a cinnamon roll. Yeah, yeah. jelly roll. Yeah. They jelly call roll, it, right? yeah. yeah. Uh, and so it's all generating heat and it's deep in that battery. And so, so since it's wrapped up like this, you'd really like to suck the heat out of the bottom mm -hmm. or the top pull it out of the end because you're close to every piece that's generating heat. Here, the heat that's generating in the middle of that cell, it's harder to pull it all the way through that cell and then just out that small, small spot. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, uh, the inefficiency of the design. But of course, from a manufacturing perspective and, and performance, you can, you can see what they're doing there. Do you think they might change that in the future and go for taking the heat out of the top and bottom? I think if they were to determine good ways to do that and cost-effective ways to do that. They'd go to yeah, that. They, yeah. they could. Mm -hmm. uh, other battery manufacturers, that is, in fact, how they, they cool it. So, uh -huh. so there's some knowledge in that regard. So that's the battery. And in fact, I'd like to present that to you. I'm awesome. sure uh, you've got a lot of souvenirs on your desk. I but, do, uh, but I don't. You can, this is 2640? Yeah, is that yeah, what that? 4680. 4680. Yeah, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's why I come to you, because yeah. you know these things better than I do. But thank you. This you're, is a, what a great souvenir, man. Yeah. Well, the next time you're at your desk and you're thinking, man, I got it tough, just pick that up and realize yeah, yeah. people got it even tougher. That's a, <laughs> that's a tough uh, piece to make and, and design, and, and you see what it has to do here. Mm -hmm. You can also uh, observe something uh, interesting here when you 
get all this covering off, the fill that we talked about, you can notice that there's areas where the fill isn't complete. Oh yeah, there's not that, uh, yeah. the, the foam in, exactly. in areas like exactly. this. So that's part of the process. I mean, you think of the process to fill this whole thing with foam, let it grow, expand, you know, come up to uh, this and, 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 and completely seal it all off and do everything. There's still room to uh, improve uh, that. So do you think that. that this is not deliberate? The foam just didn't get there? Well, there's foam down in there. You can see where there was some foam, mm -hmm. uh, but it never was. It, it wasn't enough injected, or the temperature was different here, and it wasn't able to rest. This is like putting insulation into a house. Yeah. You know, they spray a little bit, and then it grows up and, right. and fills between uh, the studs. It's kind of how this works. So, more more process uh, development. So, uh, definitely a challenge. Mm -hmm. When it comes to you know cooling these things and running the fluid down these these ribbons, um, which again is is pretty challenging, the the coolant comes in, goes through a manifold, and goes through these ribbons. I found this uh, interesting: is that the connections that are made for these manifolds, if you look, they're just a press fit; they're a snap fit. So as this piece goes in, there are no clamps. Or anything. Yeah. It just pushes in, click, and it's in And place. it's done. It's yeah. done. So smart. So, it just, so uh, easy. Yeah, they do it like that. Uh, here is another one a little bit different. Our guys broke it, trying to get it off. Because um, you got to figure this stuff, how does it work? And, uh, but you can see it's here, it's here. This is a bigger one. This is a, a larger piece that comes right off the inlet and outlet. But you can see the design. It just snaps See that too. snap fit. It yeah. just snaps and snaps those in. So, you know, what doing the things they can to reduce the labor content, the time, the cost of uh, just building it. And it's so simple. That's what I am so impressed about. Yep. The, the various um, sections of the battery, about 200 se volt sections here, they're, they're separated, uh, insulated both electrically and you know, thermally here uh, by these dividers. And there's a seal that seals up against uh, the battery bottom. But even that seal, the way it's designed, it has these snap fits. So that seal just comes in, gets pushed in, pushes until it clicks in that hole. Yeah. Just click, 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 and, and you're moving on. So Tesla's really good at design for manufacturing and assembly. It, they, they seem to have a real eye for it and a drive. Mm -hmm. How do we make it better? Mm -hmm. How do we make it uh, more effective? And it's not a simple thing to build, obviously. No, but, no, uh, this is very But how do I do it at rate? How do I do it uh, quickly? This is a, uh, I'm kind of in, uh, intrigued a little bit. When you tear the bottom off, you know, it has a big seal through here. And you'd expect the seal, you'd want it to break within the material, right, within the actual seal. But you can see here, it's actually peeled away from the metal. It's not that it wasn't a full fill, it was. But just right in, in this area and a couple others, it wasn't able to adhere to the metal directly. Hmm. So there was a little bit of oil, a little bit of film, you know, something that, that didn't allow it to cure really well there. So again, part of that process too. Right. Um, how, how do we continually improve our quality, our reliability? Last time we were here, we talked about the uh, water waiting mm -hmm. mode. And the fact that this battery and the penthouse with all the, the electronics is pressurized because it has a waiting mode, a boat mode. It says, okay, we're gonna go underwater. And so they, they charge it. They have an air suspension anyway. They're, they have a compressor, they're making uh, air compressing. They have a large reservoir, looks like a big scuba tank that's holding that air. And so when you go to the waiting mode, it starts to pressurize the penthouse and the battery. It's for reasons like this. Any micro, you know, leak, uh, if the battery's hot and then you submerse it and, and the temperature goes down, the pressure goes down, the pressure's higher on the outside and water always wins, it'll find its way in there. And so pressurize it so that doesn't happen. Uh, and you can see why, why mm -hmm. you want to do that, because those failure modes uh, indeed do exist. Last time we were together, I, I uh, made an error. I, I said something that wasn't exactly right. We talked about the waiting mode and I believe I said something along the line of, it took 30 minutes to say, okay, I'm gonna go waiting, put it in waiting mode, and then you had to wait 30 minutes for it to build up enough pressure and charge this thing to say, okay, now we can go. 
and then you got about 15 minutes to go in the water. I had that essentially backwards. Actually, uh, according to the literature, it takes about 10 minutes to charge with air. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you want to go waiting, you hit the waiting mode, and it takes about 10 minutes. That's a lot better than 30 minutes of yeah. waiting. It's still, if you're driving out and all of a sudden you're at a creek and you want to go through the creek, 10 minutes might seem like uh, still like a long time. It would. But it's still a really good idea yeah. if you're going to take this thing through the water uh, to do that. And then uh, the system gives you about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in fact, if, if you look the uh, HMI screen that comes up, it starts to uh, you know, talk you through this, how to activate. Uh, that mode, and then once you're hitting that limit, it says, okay, your fun time's over. It's time, yeah. to, time to get back and go. <laughs> get out of the water. Get out of the water. That's great. So, uh, I apologize about that. Hey, I had those numbers essentially. Uh, look, we got uh, to correct back it. For us, so but, that's uh, what counts. Yeah, I hope that's, uh, that, that's good. The, all the batteries have sensing modules. So it's important to know what's the charge, state of charge on these batteries. What's the temperature? You know, how are the, how are the, what's the state of health of my batteries, both from a charge and simply a balance. And so that's all controlled. Each one has a battery sensing module. Uh, you can see inside a little bit here. Um, you know, the all electronics, the, electronics the ribbon connectors that come and, and connect all these things because they all have to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, is that in this case, you look at all these batteries, the weakest one sets the, the pace. So you start getting the weak ones, you know, they start to drag the whole thing down. It's kind of like Herbie, you can't go any faster than the slowest part here. But uh, you can see it there. And, and again, just a little bit of <laughs> collateral damage during uh, takedown. You can also see some of the wires, you know, the, the communication wires. There's a trough that comes along here. These wires are, are routed through it to get all these things to the control modules. It's they amazing. suffer a little bit when we... When you break it apart break or it try apart, to open you know, it. It's right. almost impossible to right. take them apart. But it's an amazingly sophisticated, complicated piece well, of equipment. It is. And, you know, it's a bit, you know, it's, it's a bit awesome. Yeah, what, no, it, what is. it is. And, you know, it totally is. So, is. Uh, if, if you think that it's it's easy, again, yeah. look at that yeah. on your desk and realize it's it's uh, it's, it's really tough. hard. It's the old uh, Carlos Santana line. Mm -hmm. right? You know, playing the guitar is really hard. Here, you do it. <laughs> 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 Can you imagine saying, "Here, you design a battery pack"? Yeah, absolutely. But you know, this is uh, kind of the wild west right now with EVs. And yeah. What are the batteries? What's the technology? Mm -hmm. and, and you can see that it's right for, for technology R&D advancements because there's a lot of cost, a lot of mass, you know, very challenging part, yeah. of, part of the EV business. And then we got the, the brains that run it, right? Yeah. We found some really interesting things yeah, here we did. on the power electronics. In the, uh, in the power converter module and DC to DC converter that are combined this is in the penthouse. This is one of those boxes that we, we pointed out. But I thought it was interesting if you contrast the Model Y to the, uh, the Cybertruck, because there's advancements. You can see where they stepped. In one area in particular, um, when we look at, we have to step the power down. We have 800 volts, but we want to have an output to your house at 110, or to your tools, or 220. Well, you got to get from 800 down there. It doesn't magic. Um, and so we have to put it through transformers. Uh, also, we have a 48 volt architecture, and so you got to get this feeds it. So you got to get from nine, uh, 800 volts down to a 48 volt side. That's done through transformers. Just like in the Model Y, it was done through transformers to get from 400 down to 110 or 220. And here you can see the transformers that were used in the Model Y. These uh, were just the traditional type of a transformer, a bobbin wrapped with uh, copper wires. And you know that's the method in which we were able to take that, that uh, higher voltage and, and drop it down. This is almost identical. Remember when you had your electric train? Yeah. And you had a 110 house, right. and you needed to get down to about four to make this locomotive go around your track, and there was a transformer, and it would get hot, and it would buzz. That's almost identical yeah. to what this is. <laughs> on the Model Y. <laughs> on the Model Y. Now on the Cybertruck, you can see that they've gone to what's called a planar uh, transformer. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
you know, much smaller in size. They're much more um, power dense, uh, much easier to assemble. Um, if you look, the coil, instead of wrapping the copper around a bobbin. Like we say on the left Like you do side. on the left in the Model Y. On the right, this winding is actually in the PCB board. And it's in the various levels of the board, because the board's just not one board, it's several boards that are layered on top of each other. So this winding is in the board, and then we're just able to clamp around that. And all that is it's just right there. Wow. So we can just surface mount this thing, and uh, much uh, less cost much less, you know, less mass and much easier to assemble. Like the, the capacitors as well. Here on the Model Y you can see there are nine relatively large capacitors. If anybody ever throws you a charge capacitor, don't catch it, just <laughs> let it go. Um, but these capacitors that we see in the Model Y have been replaced with these capacitors. Dinky little chips. Oh my goodness, little solid state chips. <laughs> That, uh, that are doing the same job as this. Now to assemble those, again, these are assembled and you know they require some labor. Somebody's soldering these things on place. There's a way to get them on, ensure that they're all connected, no cold joints and, and all that happens. This just comes together. It goes through a soldering float process just like so many boards do. And you know you can just start making them much more efficiently. So it's a, just a good, uh, another good example of the progression, and you can just visually see going from this level of module to this. In two years' time. Quite a, I mean, two Unbelievable, years time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is not anything we'd see happen at a legacy company. They'd stick with what they are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've got these, I can make them, you know. Uh, but here, with that, that constant drive. One other thing, I, I know you have an eye for the Easter eggs. Yeah. And yeah, so, yeah. you know, we, we occasionally find even more. Uh, here on the silk screen, on the on one of the boards in yeah. the vehicle, it's a Superman symbol. And they even call the thing uh, uh, VCSU Superman. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> they get these little things that are out there all the time that are just uh, eye catching. You say, what is yeah. that? I mean, and when we've seen other silk screens on other boards, I was like, whoa, look at this! What they have here. Well, Terry, thanks so much. You're, this is you're welcome. great to get into even more detail on the Cybertruck than we saw before, and we got into a lot before. Yeah. Um, we're, we're completing up the entire 48 volt architecture. You know, we're feeding the 48 volts from that, through that, down to the whole system. So uh, I think the last step here is to show how that's being allocated, because it's not all 48 volt. There's still 12 volt legacy systems in there. Of course, you have to get transformers, you have to get down to right. from 48 to 12 right. uh, yet again. So uh, we'll, we'll be able to show you how that's being done and kind of what the benefit is of doing that and what they're, what they're being able to achieve with it and what it costs them to do that. Super. Thanks much. Uh, really appreciate I enjoy, it. John. Thank you.